I gotta say, it's great to see more and more people switching to solar energy, but many of them lack experience and they try to cut corners where they shouldn't have. What are the most common mistakes people make when trying to go solar? Hey, what's up? It's Jason. And in this video, I want to talk about popular mistakes that you should avoid when getting a solar system for home. Now, personally, I believe that the worst of them is number five in this list, so make sure you stick around for that. Let's start. Mistake number one, bad planning. Now, I always tell people that they should do at least a little bit of research before going solar. However, some just say, well, I just need some panels on the roof. I mean, what's more to it? And the main reason why later these people say that they didn't get what they wanted from the solar system is that their installation was sized incorrectly from the beginning. You see, some people try to cut costs by purchasing a system that is just too small for their house. Do they save money that way? Well, they do, but they also lose out on a lot since they still pay bills. The idea here is to get a system that on paper produces just a bit more than your house consumes. You can sell excess energy to the utility and your system is going to produce 20 to 40% less on cloudy days anyway. A medium house needs approximately 30 kilowatt hours per day. In California, that's how much a five to six kilowatt system produces daily. The average size of a solar system in the US has grown. It went up to seven kilowatts in 2021. So don't be afraid to get a large system. It'll pay off better. Can a system be too big? Yes, it can. If it produces way more than your house needs and you can't sell the energy to the utility, you've oversized it. The problem is that all the utilities have different policies on the way they buy solar energy from customers. It's best to contact your electric provider when you're still planning a system and talk it over. Here's some advice. Use a solar calculator to plan your solar system and use the one that A1 Solar Store offers. It's very advanced and can calculate the amount of space that you'll need for a system your daily production and saving over the years. You can find the link for that in the description below the video. So moving on, mistake number two, bad choice of panels. The worst idea would be to pick thin film panels for a home installation. I'm not a fan of polycrystalline panels. They, they are kind of obsolete and not very efficient. But if you are short on money, but have a lot of space and your system is not going to be all that big, they're fine. Otherwise, just pick monocrystalline panels instead. Newcomers often overpay for the brand by a lot, and that's understandable. The market for solar panels is huge, and there are over 350 manufacturers. Someone who's never heard about any solar brands will be naturally drawn towards familiar names like LG or Panasonic. It's not a mistake. These are good brands, but their panels are sometimes two times more expensive than average. And look at the specifications of the panels, and not the brand. You can go and check out our video on the top five solar brands in the video description or click the link on the screen. In the last few years, people started to use larger panels. Three years ago, home systems were made out of 300 to 350 watt panels. Today, 400 to 450 watt panels are much more popular and it's only reasonable. You can build a powerful system with fewer panels this way. Keep in mind that powerful modules can be harder to fit on the roof since their size is, well, obviously bigger. I wouldn't advise building a ground mounted system out of them though. It is going to be more expensive and it takes up space in your yard or field. A ground installation is good when you're building a large system and need a lot of space, but if your roof is free, hey, it's better to put panels there. Now we've already talked about choosing solar panels for home in one of our previous videos. If you have missed it, go and check it out. The link is in the description and on the screen right now. So. What's next? Oh, mistake number three, ignoring the programs from the state and utilities. Solar incentives can bring the cost of installation down by thousands of dollars. So it really makes sense to try to get them. Solar owners should always make use of federal solar tax credit. It lets you deduct 30% of your installation cost from income taxes. For example, if the solar system costs you $15,000, you could claim back $4,500. Now, the total solar installation costs include inverters, batteries, as well as labor and shipping expenses. Solar tax credit is the most important incentive, but it's not the only one. You see, some states have their own local solar programs. For example, in many states, a solar panel system is exempt from property tax. Mm. Utilities sometimes offer small rebates for the customers that go solar. 
you'll be able to save a few hundred dollars by applying for them. Some banks offer loans for clean energy projects with a low interest rate. However, loans, at least with a standard interest, aren't a great idea when going solar. And this is the mistake number four, which is leasing a system or taking a loan to buy a solar system. Think about it like this. A solar system brings you $100 to $200 every month. But monthly payments to a leasing company or a bank will amount to something around $80 to $100. As a result, you are barely making money with a solar system. The experts from Google project Sunroof calculated that a 4 kilowatt solar system in California can bring from $30 to $50,000 over its lifetime. If you paid in cash, your profits after 20 to 25 years will exceed $20,000. But if you lease a system or take a loan with a 6% interest, your earnings decrease to only two to $5,000 by year 25. The last mistake that I wanna bring up is don't do the installation by yourself. On paper, it might seem reasonable. After all, the labor makes up to 10% of the whole solar system cost. In practice, trying to do it yourself is just not worth it. If you aren't an electrician and aren't good with tools and you try to fix panels on a roof, you're putting yourself in real danger. But the biggest problem is maybe not the installation process itself, but the legal issues that you'll have to face. In some states, you can only install panels yourself if you are a certified solar contractor. In most places, you will need a permit for a system. It means that local engineers will have to take a look at the plan of your system, check your installation site, and see if it matches safety codes and all that. If you don't have any experience with making a solar installation, it's unlikely that you will get it right on the first, second or even third try. In the end, you'll only drag the installation process out. A good solar installer will handle all the paperwork and the approval process, he'll install the system correctly, he'll tell you about the incentives that you can apply for, and you can call him if your system needs maintenance. So find yourself a good contractor and don't install a system yourself if you don't know how. And that's it. These are the common mistakes that newcomers make. Let me know in the comments about your own solar experience and what you would have done differently. The second part of this video with even more mistakes should be coming out shortly, so please make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Also, go and check out our blog and our socials. Uh, we already mentioned the calculator. The link is below the video, so go check it out. That's it for me for now. I'm Jason, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.